What's up everyone, today we'll be playing some Mono Steel. So Steel is traditionally a really good type in the Mono's meta, and pretty much in every generation it was in, that Mono is an official format. It's just a, a quite a good type, has so many resistances, as well as some key offensive threats. It definitely struggles a bit this generation with Fire, with Heatran and Empoleon being gone, but overall it still definitely um, is a great type. So let's jump into the team. First off we have Excadrill. Excadrill is pretty much going to be my only speedy Pokemon on the team and going to be my um, speed control as well as a good answer to things like other steel types, electric types or fire types which my team can struggle with a bit. So with Choice Scarf and 302 speed it hits just over 415 uh, speed which is quite a decent speed tier this generation outspeeding some key threats as well as having a nice hefty attack with 369 without an adamant nature. It also is quite bulky having 361 hp which always surprises me how much hp excadrill actually has so move set wise it's pretty standard i have earthquake great stab and thanks to mold breaker does ignore um levitators like wheezing or rotom so i can just earthquake them and one and ko them next up we have rapid spin for hazard control this is pretty much only for um sticky web which my team can be annoyed by which can annoy Excadrill. Spike can also be an issue, but spikes aren't run too much in the meta, so um, that's not too big an issue. We have Rock Slide for things like Rock type, for Fire types like uh, Cora for Charizard and Volcarona. Sorry, I'm slipping up. And finally, we have Iron Head. Iron Head is great for taking care of things like Mimikyu as it ignores Disguise, um, which can otherwise drain punch a lot on my team, which can be annoying, as well as um, being able to flinch things in late game. So next up we have Ferrothorn. So you might be thinking like, oh, you have two shiny Pokemon already. I'll explain why I'm not really one to use shiny Pokemon, but there is actually a strategic purpose behind this this time. And I will explain so later. So with Ferrothorn, we have Power Whip. Power Whip is good for taking care of ground types and water types, which my team can struggle with. Uh, Leech Seed is great for longevity, as well as giving my team support by allowing them to drain HP on opponents. Thunder Wave is great team support, allowing me to slow down things like Volcarona, who very often get greedy in the face of Ferrothorn and want to go for a Quiver Dance, expecting me to swap an extra drill and a speed it with Choice Scarf. And finally, we have Spark Spikes, again, fantastic team support, allowing me to chip away things that are sturdy, that are um, Focus Sash, or just generally having to force out and wear away opponents with my defensive options. We do have leftovers for further recovery, and finally, Iron Bird, which is just a nice ability to. Um, get a bit of chip damage off when Pokemon try to attack me physically. EV wise we are a physically defensive build with max defense and max HP to take care of a lot of ground threats so it can eat up earthquakes, it can eat um, some weaker fighting moves as well thanks to it being very defensive. Next up we have Corviknight. Corviknight is going to be your typical pressure, especially defensive Corviknight. So what Corviknight's role in the team is to kind of eat up um, things like non-stab flamethrowers, non-stab um, fighting moves like Focus Blast, for example, and just kind of roost away um, the damage done to offset the damage, while Pressure does uh, apply pressure, basically, um, on their PP, letting me stall out their PP on important moves. Um, Moveset-wise, Brave Bird is very good for taking care of fighting types, which my team obviously struggles with, and Corviknight, being part flying, can actually resist a fair few of those attacks, fighting-wise. Roost, as I said earlier, is for longevity and for stalling out PP. Next up we have Bulk Up. Bulk Up is great to kind of bulk up in um, set of Pokemon's faces. This allows my Brave Bird and Body Press to become a lot stronger, as well as allowing me to eat more physical hits, which is important. And finally we have Body Press. So Body Press is really good against Rock types, which my team obviously doesn't struggle with, but you never know when that could be an issue. It's also good against other Steel types. Um, to be able to click Body Press, and it can use this nice defense stat that is boosted by its bulk up to um, do more damage without having to invest in attack and not be worried about being intimidated, for example. So next up we have Magnezone. Magnezone is actually a sturdy build and not Magnet Pull. The reason I'm not going for Magnet Pull is a lot of people, uh, it's kind of a, a mind trick, a lot of people won't actually try to swap out in a Magnezone's face thinking they are indeed Magnet Pull. It doesn't work 100% of the time, it's not foolproof. But if it works one match out of a hundred, that's still one match you can get the edge over them. So it is max special attack with specs and modest nature. This thing hits very, very hard. 
With Vault Switch, I can grab great momentum. Thunderbolt is just for an immediate bit of power over Vault Switch that it doesn't have. Flash Cannon is great stab. Being able to take care of um, a lot of things that my team can struggle with. And finally, we have Mirror Coat. Mirror Coat is fantastic, paired it's sturdy. If they do have a Volcarone, it's max setup. For example, it's, you know, plus six stages in a special attack and plus six stages in special defense and speed. So I let a quiver down six times, for example. I can just take out Magnezone and click Mirror Coat on their face. I'm guaranteed to live with Sturdy, and I will guarantee to want to KO it, assuming it's not Sash, for example. Because its HP is not the best of 281, but double 281 is about 560 damage, so there's basically nothing in the tier that's going to live that. So Zone will get some, hopefully get some work done in this episode, and you can see for yourselves. Next up we have Caesar. Caesar is going to be a physical, uh, sorry, a bulky Caesar. Not max speed, I'm investing absolutely nothing in speed because the purpose of Caesar is to be able to take a hit and be able to U-turn off on threats. For example, Slowbro, which can eat up my steel stabs quite nicely. I can U-turn and Vault Switch a lot between Magnezone and Caesar and just generally um, control momentum a lot, hopefully allowing my making my opponent swap out and taking Spike's chip. Next up we have Bullet Punch. Bullet Punch is important for just generally good stab as well as patching up my generally poor speed tiering on this team. And finally of Dual Wing Beat. Dual Wing Beat is good for taking care of fighting types. So because Caesar is bug type and is won by from fighting types, it can actually live a fighting type generally quite nicely. Like it can live a close combat or a dark um, wicked blow I believe from Urshifu and Dual Wing Beat will obviously want it KO in return thanks to it being boosted by um, Technician. And finally we have Swords Dance. Swords Dance is there to boost my already impressive 394 attack to dizzying levels of height and being able to just click Bullet Punch with Technician boosted in the end game to take care of a lot of threats. Finally we have another bulky Pokemon in bulky Jirachi. So this is quite a really uh, strange Jirachi. It's not the typical Choice Scarf Jirachi you would often see with Trick. It instead is a bulky Jirachi, which I'll explain now. So the bulk is just to, again, live hits that are kind of important for me to live. It can generally live weaker fire attacks or weak and can live fighting attacks quite nicely thanks to it being part psychic type. Moveset wise, we have Healing Wish, which is super important to this team because sometimes the team does lack recovery. Um, so for example, if Magnezone gets dropped down to Sturdy, and chances are my opponent will not have Stealth Rocks down on the team because number one, it's not too important to have Stealth Rocks down against Steel types as they do resist it, and number two, I can rapid spin them away with Excadrill. So Healing Wish can go into Magnezone and fully recover its HP and its status effect if it has one, allowing it to live on Sturdy again, potentially getting a second Mirror Coat off or just generally being quite strong and allowing me to uh, click like Specs Flash Cannon or Specs Thunderbolt again. Next up we have Moonblast. Moonblast is for taking care of Dragons and Dark Types, which my team I wouldn't necessarily say struggles with, but it's always nice to have that Fairy Damage to take care of things like that. As well as that, thanks to Serene Grace, Moonblast has a 60% chance of dropping their special attack, which is quite nice. Next up we have Psychic. Psychic is just good stab, and it gives me a good answer to um, fighting types again, which I've mentioned so many times. That's because fighting is a huge issue on the team. It also hits um, fire types neutrally, which is quite important as well. Especially coming off the max special attack adamant, it can hit quite powerful with a 20% chance of dropping special defense thanks to um, its Serene Grace. And my personal favorite move on the entire team, and one of my favorite moves in the game, is Doom Desire. So Doom Desire is basically Future Sight, but Steel type. It hits two turns later at the end of the turn. If the Pokemon is fainted, it will not have an effect. But what this lets me do is essentially control the battlefield and say, hey, you can't swap into that Pokemon this turn, or you have to eat a Doom Desire or basically force them to swap into Pokemon that I want them to swap into. For example, if they have a water type on the team, it basically says, I have to swap into my water type this turn to eat a Doom Desire, which will allow me to read that and go into Magnezone or Ferrothorn, for example, and just generally gain good momentum. So finally, the reason why I have half shinies and half not shinies is not because I prefer the look of them, though I do like the look of some of the shiny Pokemon I have. It's because Moonblast is exclusive to shiny Jirachi. So if I have to run Shiny Jirachi, um, which I would always recommend running anyway, regardless if you're a Moonblast set or not, because it gives the opponent the thought process that, oh, that may be Moonblast, or if you are not running Shiny, it tells the opponent outright, I'm not Moonblast, I do not have Moonblast, because I cannot learn Moonblast. 
So for example, in a case like that, I would always recommend running the shiny variant of a Pokemon, even if you're not running their event move, to put mind tricks, um, to play mind tricks on your opponent. And the reason I have shinies is to possibly condition my opponent to thinking I just like shiny Pokemon, and it's nothing to do with Jirachi being a Moomblast variant. Again, it's kind of a one in a hundred shot of working, but if it works, it is important in any case. And that's going to be the team. We're going to pause there till we find some games and hopefully have some good games. So we have a game and it is against a water team. Thankfully it's not rain abusing so it won't be as bad with regards to that. Um, but it's certainly not going to be too easy for me. Um, my team absolutely hates dealing with things like Seismitoad and Keldeo. And Crawdot can be quite strong too. But in this game uh, we do like Ferrothorn a lot. Uh, Magazone's quite good as well. And Jirachi can put in some work against some of the threats too. So in this game, I think we actually open up with Ferrothorn. Hopefully they don't open up with Keldeo. As they indeed open up with Keldeo, that's okay because I can get in Corviknight immediately. And assuming that's not Specs, I shouldn't be too okay by this. As they go for a Taunt. I will Brave Bird here because I value any damage on their team at all. Especially the Keldeo. I don't think they should stay in his Keldeo, but you'd be surprised. So Jirachi's ability to kind of click Psychic and Moonblast in this game is quite good, as they go into Seismitoad, and they actually give me a good chunk of damage off from that. Presumably they want to Scald me, so I will go Ferrothorn here, as I do not want to be burnt on my Corviknight. And in this position I can kind of just start and get spikes down. They can Rapid Spin away with Blastoise, if they so choose to do that, as they go back in to Keldy. I always take our Corviknight here as I can either threaten them with Brave Bird or Roost Off if they try Calm Mind attack me. So I'm just going to attack them directly with the Brave Bird. Again I value damage on Keldeo so much and the fact they're not Scarf means they are outsped by Excadrill and in the position now where they start to take a lot of damage. So I think Brave um, Corviknight has served its purpose in this game. And here I can just take out Excadrill and click Earthquake. So nothing terribly like swapping in on a stab Earthquake, especially with Spike Stone. As they take in Araquanid, that's okay with me. Um, possibly wanting to get Sticky Webs down, but my team doesn't care for Sticky Webs too much at this point in the game. Especially if I can get more layers of Spike Stone. So a lot of my team isn't that speedy, except for Excadrill, but I have priority to take care of Keldeo, as Keldeo comes back out. Hmm. I think Jirachi lives a hit, if they calm mind up. As they go straight for a Secret Sword, and I absolutely live a hit, quite nicely too. And here I just click Moonblast over Psychic so I can catch the Crawdont on the possible swap. So max HP Jirachi. Pulling through from me here, managing to live Keldeo quite nicely. Now it's certainly within their best interest to remove my hazards from the field with Blastoise. In case they want to go for a Shell Smash, I'll click Moonblast here to try get the special attack drop. Nice. So Serene Grace helping a lot here, as they click Hydro Pump. In this position, I think my play is to T-Wave this, as they thankfully miss Focus Blast. And that's quite lucky for me. And I'll just click Power Whip here, as they missed twice. I feel bad for them in that regard, because Focus Blast is just, as everyone knows, completely unreliable. So they might go for a close combat here. And... I think I just power whip as they swords down to my face. And I missed the power whip, which is very much justified as they missed two focus blasts. Unfortunately, this puts me in a bad position, especially if I miss this power whip as I hit, thankfully. So they would have been in the position where they can aqua jet and do a lot of damage to my team. Pre Marina comes out, and I'll try Leech Seed here on the Cam Mind. 
So I'm not too worried about this thing setting up as Magnazone does have Mirror Coat if needs be. I'm gonna click Power Up here to break the sub. As I miss, again, fairly justified at this point in the game. So maybe I should have just clicked Power Up in the first place, but it doesn't seem like they have anything to KO me. Yeah, they're Hyper Voice and Psychic. Granted, Hyper Voice did a lot more damage than Psychic did, thanks to Stab, and that's the game, so we're going to pause there until I find another one. So we have a game against Mono Ghost, and right off the bat, this looks like it could be challenging, as Chandelure and Marowak definitely are a huge threat to my team, and potentially Dragapult too, depending on the set it runs. So here, I think they want to open up with Runa Regis. And so I will go Ferrothorn, trying to get my spikes down as early as possible, which will help tremendously in the end, late game. As they go into Marowak, hmm. I expect maybe a Flare Blitz to come out here. Though I think I need to keep Magnazone alive for the late game. I will suck Jirachi as I don't think it has too much of a role in this game. And now it lets me see if that is Rockhead, which it is. So I know for certain now that is not immune to my Thunderbolts. But I will take in Excadrill and click Earthquake, as nothing on your team really likes to swap into an Earthquake. As Rune Regis doesn't take too much damage, but it lets me get back up another layer of spikes, hopefully. Which could be tremendously helpful in the late game. As they are Trick Room. Ooh, that is scary. So thankfully, Trick Room Marowak cannot outspeed me. And I will get a Power Whip down here. Just a bit of chip to hopefully put it in the position where um, Magnazone will kill. I use Magnazone because it is sturdy and will guarantee to live a hit here. And I'll just click Thunderbolt. Nice. So unfortunately that was my best answer to Chandelure, outside of things like Excadrill. But we can work with this. I'll go Caesar here. Hopefully they don't wisp me, they just go for a Stealth Rock. And I'll try click Dual Wing Beat just to take this out before it can... Unfortunately it gets the Trick Room off anyway. I will Swords Dance a bit to try and just kind of wear out its Trick Run turns. So thankfully Toxic Spikes does nothing to me and it doesn't seem like this Pokemon is anything that threatens me whatsoever. And Bullet Punch kind of just tears holes through their team, even if it's not Technician boosted anymore, uh, unfortunately because of Wandering Spirit. So I click Swords Dance again and then I click Bullet Punch. Excadrill is still fantastic in the end game. And I just click Bullet Punch here. Chandler can probably eat a Bullet Punch, thanks to it not being Technician, but it still takes a chunk of damage in order to do so, as they take in Mimikyu. I don't think this can want to KO me, and Bullet Punch definitely do a KOs, or one of KOs after Disguise. Oh, as they are Trick Room, interesting. So my play there probably was to actually do a wing beat. So I kind of have to stall in their turn or two with Swords Dance. I just need to stall to the extent that I can click Bullet Punch on the final turn of Trick Room. Ooh, that did a lot of damage. So that crit there was unfortunate, but thankfully I am technically slower or faster in Trick Room, depending on how you look at it. And this thing does not take kindly to a Bullet Punch, as it is Sucker Punch. Okay, I can take out Corviknight here. And try to bulk up in its face. As it does seem to be a mixed set. That 
that para is quite unfortunate for me and might end up costing me the game in fact. So I value Corviknight being alive too much in the endgame against Gengar and Dragapult, so I want Excadrill to come in here and get a KO with Earthquake. Now they can easily go into Gengar. If they click Focus Blast, Corviknight's my best play, as they click Destiny Bond. Hmm. This puts me in a dangerous position. Hmm. So I think I misplayed there. I should have always doubled into Excadrill on the Destiny Bond. And here it looks like I'm going to take a loss. Assuming Flamethrower will 2 KO me. Absolutely destroys me as it is indeed Specs. So that was very well played by my opponent and I lose to the Destiny Bond. Oh, was that a throw? So that mightn't have actually been Scarf at all, and they went for the Cursed Body. GG. So unfortunately the Cursed Body activated there and cost me the game, but they played well, so I'm going to pause till I find another game. We have a game against Mono Psychic, and in this game I love Caesar. Um, ability to click a U-turn on a lot of their threats, as well as Corviknight who can kind of eat up Mystical Fires, though I do have to be wary of things like Hatterene who can um, calm mine to my face and give me a lot of trouble. Excadrill is also quite nice here, has a good speed tier, and Iron Head does a lot of damage to a lot of their team. Or Earthquake, in fact, is probably better because it takes care of things like Jirachi. So in the start here, I'm going to open up Caesar and hopefully just U-turn off on their threat, which is going to be Jirachi. So I just click U-turn here. As they trick a uh, Choice Scarf onto me, good play. But it lets me open up the position where Excadrill can come out and just click Earthquake. Their best play is definitely going to Slowbro here who can eat a hit and pivot off me. So I'm actually tempted to open up Magnezone this way and cut the jump on Slowbro as it comes out. So here I click Volt Switch, grabbing momentum myself because they most likely have to swap out if they don't want to eat a Specs Volt Switch. And I get loads of damage on Jirachi, which is quite nice. And it kind of opens up Caesar again to click U-turn here. So if I can continuously like Volt turn around, and um, with these threats, I can do some decent damage to their team. I'll take out Jirachi here and kind of just click Doom Desire. Which really limits my opponent's swap-ins. As they open, come up with it in Deity. I know Corviknight can eat Specs hits from in Deity, but I'm going to try to get a special attack drop with Moonblast. As they unfortunately get the special defense drop. Not to worry, as I think Caesar can come out on this. It's not stab, and it's minus the stage and special attack, so I should eat two hits, because I am a bulky variant. As they get a special defense drop again, which is slightly annoying, but I can U-turn here, and just do a chunk of damage on Slowbro, which opens up Magnezone for me here, to click Volt Switch, and kind of get tons more damage on something else. So I want to be able to get spikes down with Ferrothorn, but unfortunately Hatterene does threaten me a lot in that regard. As they trace my sturdy. Good play. I am um, I'll take in Ferrothorn because I think it is the weakest link on the team. And kind of just click Power Whip here. If they click Mystical Fire, I think I die. Um, or Focus Blast, I believe, kills me too. But I might just about hang in there, and if I can get a kill with power up, that'd be quite good. Nice, so I actually do live the Focus Blast quite nicely. Surely they swap into Hatter in here, so I'm going to try Leech Seed just in case they stay in. And they click Fire Blast, okay. Good play. I think, as always, I get in Magnezone and click Volt Switch. How much did Volt Switch do earlier? Not enough to KO, that's for sure. So I'll click Thunderbolt here, which should KO. Nice. So I take care of Slowbro, which is a huge threat to my team. As Alakazam comes in. I'll click Thunderbolt again, as the Focus Blast misses. Lucky for me. And I activate their Sash. And paralyze them, so that was a huge turn for me. Um, definitely hard for them 
to come back from this, but it's not impossible. So here I click Doom Desire, which kind of just says, you know, I'm going to threaten Hatterene if it wants to come in. And I will Healing Wish here into Zone. To put, oh, so Stealth Rock actually comes out after Zone, that's my bad. My thought process was I wanted to put it at full HP to be able to Mirror Coat either to the Hatterene or Indeedee. But unfortunately it did not work out for me. So Caesar is my best play because that forces in Indeedee. And I kind of just U-turn here on the Mystical Fire. Now if it is Scarf, Excadrill lives, and if it's Specs, I outspeed and kill with Iron Head. Which also puts me in a good position to KO Hatterene. Now I don't think this one had KOs, but it does a chunk of damage. I was draining kits for basically no damage or no HP back, so that's going to be game. GG, and we're going to pause there till we find another one. So we have a game against another mono steel type. Um, this can be a bit dangerous as things like Steelix and Magnezone can actually give my team quite a lot of trouble, as well as Excadrill itself. So I definitely have to play this one somewhat carefully. Um, in this game, I do love Corviknight. Its ability to click body press on most of their team, but I have to be very wary that Magnazone is defeated first. So we're going to open Ferrothorn as their team doesn't have too many answers to that. Unless, of course, they are going to be a Fire Punch Jirachi. But I'll try T-Wave whatever comes out here. Assuming it's Caesar or Aegislash because I cannot T-Wave these three here. And then I just kind of start getting spikes down as I am slower. Ah, they are Trick Room, that makes sense. So I get as many spike layers down as possible here. That is a uh, slow Jirachi. I'm oh, sorry, a fast Jirachi, I'm slower. I don't think Steelix gets Heat Crush. So I'll try to Leech Seed it here. As they sub, this could be dangerous for me. Yeah, uh, very dangerous actually. So I'll try to get as many layers of spikes down here. And they're going to go for a body press end game, I think. Hmm. Not good. So I definitely want to try break that. To hopefully open up Magnezone doing a lot of damage here. As I didn't break it at all. Okay, that's going to be the end for me, I think. I don't see a way in which I can beat that Steelix. Unless somehow Corviknight lives, but even then I'm doubting it. Hmm. I have to flash cannon into flash cannon to weaken it as much as possible. And I will live thanks to Sturdy. And I believe because I'm specs I do break this substitute in one hit. But here I'm kind of relying on a crit to win. Wow, that is a lot of defense. So I guarantee live this thanks to Sturdy. But Flash Cannon, short of like a crit, won't do enough to KO. So that seems like it's going to be game, unfortunately. As I don't have anything on Jirachi that can take care of it. And there's no way Corviknight lives. Or Caesar for that matter. So I can hope for an Earthquake crit here. Which I do not get and it does no damage. Hmm. That does a surprise amount of damage. Unfortunately I still get absolutely obliterated. And again, kinda of have to go for a body press crit. GG. So that was a uh, very quick one, but great to see Caesar, or sorry, Steelix get some use like that. Um, really cool to see. So we're going to pause there till I find another one. So we have a game against Mono Fairy, which definitely is in my favour on paper, but I still have to be careful of things like Hatterene, which can be quite dangerous to my team, as well as Togekiss, and um, Azumarill can be quite tough too. So I'm going to open up Jirachi and try to get a Doom's Desire off as soon as possible, limiting their swappings. 
I of course value Caesar so much in this game to be able to click bullet punch as well as um, Excadrill. So I'll try to get Doom Desire off here as I swap into Klefki, which works for, for me. And here I will bluff the Magnet Pull and kind of just Vault Switch out as they light screen up. That's okay with me. I'll actually Flash Cannon as it ends up KOing thanks to a crit, but I think I would have died to Doom Desire afterwards regardless. Now this thing can be an issue for me now. Um, I think I just try Flash Cannon in its face as it goes for a Fire Blast and I live thanks to Sturdy. And I get a huge chunk of damage off on them. So I believe Corviknight can live here. Though I might be inviting nasty plots which can be dangerous for my team. Nice. So I think I should live the next fire blast and I roost up on it. As it does KO, that's okay. So my plan was to roost and then sack Magnezone to get in Caesar. But I believe Bullet Punch KOs this percentage anyway. Unfortunately, yeah, this opens up a zoom roll for them. And they do have two turns left of reflect. Hmm. I bullet punch to get some damage off here. They shouldn't want to KO me. And I forced them to bullet the uh, belly drum. Unfortunately, my bullet punch won't KO. I'll try going Ferrothorn here to get some Iron Barb damage off as they open up a Substitute. Good play. So if I can break this with Power Whip, uh, I can still potentially win the game. Thanks to Bullet Punch outspeeding their Aqua Jet. Though I still have to worry about Primarina. It's quite strong in this position. And I'll take in Jirachi, as it should be able to live a hit. Um, I think I just Moonblast to keep this thing special attack low. Or do I value Magnezone being full HP again? I'm going to Moonblast and hope Serene Grace works in my favour. Okay, that does no damage. That was not the play in my purse. So I'm really hoping this isn't max speed, as I managed to break the sub. And I'm going to Healing Wish into my Magnezone here. So that means I have my Mirror Coat back and ready. I think I'll just click Thunderbolt here. Uh, there's nothing particularly like swapping unit, and it is plus two special defense, but nicely it still gets two hit KO'd, and I live thanks to Sturdy. That's okay, because I do believe Primarina is in range of a uh, bullet punch at this stage. I'll take an Excadrill, as it does ignore mold, um, Disguise thanks to Mold Breaker, and Iron Head kind of just wins the game here, I think. GG. So that was actually quite a close game. Um, they played very well, but thankfully Steel has the advantage in this matchup, and I'll pause there until I find another game. So we have a game against Mono Bug, which is actually one of Steel's harder matchups, just because Volcarona is such a huge threat to their team overall. Um, as well as that, Galvantula can be annoying with its ability to click um, Sticky Web in the early game. So what I'm going to actually do is, okay, I was going to open up with Excadrill and Rapid Spin away their webs, but they opened up Heracross, wanted to get a close combat sweep from the get-go. Um, Jirachi should be able to live too, as, ooh, that is stronger than I expected. Hmm. And if Jirachi can't live too, Corviknight should just about be able to, if I did my... Matt's correct. So in this position, I think Corviknight can just roost up and kind of try to outlive the close combat as they go into Galvantula. 
on Galvantula, I can start getting some spikes down. So what this does is kind of invites in Volcarona, exactly, uh, which I can T-wave then on the Quiver Dance. Nice. So that's one of the big reasons I have Quivered um, T-wave on this build. But they are going for a sweep, unfortunately. In this position, I don't think I want to sack Ferrothorn just yet. I think Jirachi might be my sack. And then I can take out Magnazone and kind of click Miracles. So I click Miracles here. Uh, the Sturdy helps me live, and the Miracle takes care of Volcarona, which is such a huge start to my team. And I know I can swap into Corviknight on things like Heracross. And their team will start taking Chip now. I right, go Ferrith one here, in case they try Sword Dance. Which they do. And I will T-Wave this as well. If they are Superpower, I do die. But it doesn't seem like they are. Wow, that bug bite did a lot of damage. Hmm. So that's doing a lot of damage to me. And I think in this position, I actually. I don't care too much about webs. But I do need to keep Corviknight healthy for the end game. I'm going to go off them getting a Paralyze here. And I'll try Volt Switch out, as they don't, unfortunately. I don't particularly want my Corvi getting knocked either, as it will take a ton of damage. But being able to set up would be quite nice. And then I can possibly Bullet Punch in the endgame to win, beating Heracross. I think Excrude does my play here. Bullet Punch shouldn't be able to win a KO me. And uh, nothing particularly like swapping into Earthquake. It's not very effective on a lot of their team, but it still does a lot of damage. Now Galvantula is definitely a big threat to me here, as it can easily take care of Corviknight. As they go into Frostmoth. Interesting play, because I can always get in Caesar on this. And just click Bullet Punch. I do not care at all about a Quiver Dance as Bullet Punch won at KOs easily. If they go in Heracross, I'm almost certain Caesar does live one. But I value it too much in the end game, so I go Corviknight here who I know can live one at close combat. I expect maybe Galvantula to come out here, but either way I have to roost as Scolipede comes out. Interesting. Um, I'm going to bulk up here and click Brave Bird, which should KO. Rock Slide doesn't do enough damage, and assuming I'm not flinching, I do get the KO, which is nice. Uh, naturally, Galvantula comes out here, which means I go into Excadrill. On the Thunder, and here I just Rapid Spin away the webs. Now, Rapid Spin is quite weak, but it still does a lot of damage to them. And puts me in the position where if they can't click close combat, as it will run out of PP before they can kill me. I'm also guaranteed to outspeed here. Which is okay, because I get a bit of chip with Rapid Spin. They click the close combat, and they do get the plus one. But here I always swap into pressure Corviknight, which makes them lose their PP having to struggle against the Caesar. So GG, and we're going to pause there until we find another game. So we have a game against Mono Electric, which can be a bit tough for my team. Um, certainly, Corviknight hates fighting this team, but between Ferrothorn and Excadrill, I can get a good bit of work done here. So let's see what we can do. We are worried about Raichu, uh, with his amazing speed tier, especially with Pingurchin, to get the Surge Surfer off. So we're going to open up a Jirachi here, expecting them to maybe want to go in Galvantula as they take out Rodon Heat. Um, I don't think a single overheat will kill, so here I'll click Psychic and try to get as much damage off of them as possible, as they are a sub-variant. So again, I just value any damage we can get off, as overheat does a ton of damage to me. 
I don't think I want to sack Jirachi just yet. But it doesn't seem to have the best matchup against most things. Um, it is outspeeded by a ton of their teams, so I'm actually you will end up sacking Jirachi as they take out Galvantula. So unfortunately here, Bug Buzz can KO me, um, but they shouldn't be able to KO Caesar as they go for a web. Great play. So what webs let them do is outspeed my Excadrill later in the game, as they probably want to go for another overheat here. I will sack Caesar as it does not have much of a part in this game at all. And here I can spin away the webs while also being able to knock out Rotom if they so choose to stay in. Nice. That's great for me. Takes care of a huge threat to my team. And I definitely value keeping zone um, healthy as possible for Mirror Coat on Raichu. I think Ferrothorn's my best play here. And to start trying to get my spikes down as they go into Toxtricity. So this can be dangerous for me, especially yeah, if it's a shift gear variant. But here, I think I just value my spikes. As I can nicely live what they throw my way. Though they are Throat Spray, meaning they're going to do a, a lot more damage this turn. So I'll power up to get as much damage off of them as possible. It's not very effective, but it will 2 KO them after Leech Seed damage. Which is nice, assuming it does connect here. Nice. So that's great for my team. Um, it puts me at a slightly lower risk, though as I said, Raichu is definitely still an issue for my team. I think I value Ferrothorn a lot in the end game, so I'm going to sack Corviknight here. As they go Focus Blast, which is okay with me, and they do take a bit of Life Orb Chip here. I want to swap in Excadrill and kind of read these but I'm just going to sack and go the easy way out here so what this lets me do is take in Magnezone here and click Mirror Coat if they choose to Focus Blast me I don't no, Flash Cannon I think here is this percentage so I actually click Flash Cannon or does it? I can't risk it Nah, no, I'm going to risk it. Famous last words, I know. But this catches uh, Pink Urchin or Zero or Aura on the swap. I'm just going to mute spectators here. Um, how do I do this? So I got Zero Aura on the swap, which is super good for me. Unfortunately, close combat does a, a chunk to my entire team now. So I definitely have to keep my Ferrothorn at full HP to be able to click Mirror Code and hope this thing isn't scarfed. Though I have a feeling it is indeed banded. Nice, we get rid of Pink Urchin and Raichu is forced to come out here. So I always sack Jirachi here, as they end up missing, and I will Healing Wish just in case they end up missing again, as they go for Rising Voltage, good play. This lets me get in my Magnezone, who will live thanks to Sturdy, and should get a KO here with Flash Cannon. Nice. So now, assuming this isn't Scarfed, which it wasn't, GG, so we're going to pause there until we find another game. So we have a game against Mono Psychic, and in this game, um, Hatterene is actually quite a big issue for my team, despite being Fairy-type, for its ability to click Mystical Fire on a lot of my Pokémon, as well as Slowbro being able to Fire Blast or um, Scald Burn my teams, and Alakazam is quite deadly for its ability to click Focus Blast or Counter. So here, I think I'll open up a Jirachi and try to get a Doom's Desire off as early as possible, limiting my opponent's swappings. They can click Fire Blast on me, but it shouldn't do too much damage. And if they do swap out with Teleport, as they Thunder Wave me. Okay, good play. But I can get a Moon Blast off here, which will hopefully lower their special attack. And now their Scald can no longer burn me. So unfortunately, I get fully powered, but Doom's Desire does a lot of damage. So I'll try to click that again. 
they don't seem to be able to do too much damage to my team. And here I'll actually try to click a Psychic, rolling for the Special Defense drop with Serene Grace to allow Doom Desire to do a whole lot more damage. So unfortunately they are slightly out um, living my damage, but once I get the 20% Special Defense drop, that can change massively. As they go into Jirachi, I can get the defense drop that I needed, which is super good for me. I will Moonblast wherever it comes in, and also whatever is coming in is eating a Doom Desire as well this turn. To be honest, I value any chip I can get on their team at all um, this early in the game. And I kind of click Moonblast here again. Unfortunately, they get the crit and the flinch, but that's to be expected with Serene Grace. So they're giving me a ton of chip there on the Jirachi, which is really good for me, as their Iron Head isn't doing too much damage. They take back in slow, bro. This is a slow start to the game, but as I said, any damage I can get on the likes of uh, Jirachi are quite nice early in the game. And I'm struggling to swap out on this Actually, I'll go in Magnezone here, and it's possibly a recover, a slack off. As I scald, that's not to worry about because I can healing wish that back um, late in the game. And I'll click Vault Switch here, grabbing momentum or killing Slowbro. So the Skull Burn's kind of annoying, but I can healing wish back into that later in the game, maybe when Hatterene is out on the field. As Hatterene actually comes out here. So it would be nice to be able to click Iron Head, but unfortunately that lets Slowbro in this early in the game. So I'll take in Caesar and click Bullet Punch. If they swap into Slowbro, I can U-turn off. Um, getting a good chunk of damage here. They are, of course, Rocky Helmet. But that's a nice chunk of damage there. And Magnezone can come in again and Vault Switch away. That is quite strong, meaning I do need to healing wish it back to full HP. I'll click a Doom Desire first. Again, limiting their swap ins, and here I will try healing wish into my zone. Getting it back to nicely full HP. And I can click Flash Cannon here to get the KO. Unfortunately, Doom Desire does not take off this turn. But I'm at full HP and have my Sturdy and Miracle back. I know for a fact Corviknight can live as Specs Mystical Fire. Hopefully, they don't go to trick me. And I can just roost back up here to full HP. It's with my best interest not to get. Scald burned by Slowbro here, but since their Hatterene is dead, I can now spread spikes among their team thanks to their magic bounce being gone, which helps so much in the late game. As they teleport out, presumably into Indeedy. So I value absolutely any spikes I can get down in this game, as Indeedy unfortunately comes out. Hmm. I don't think I live in Mystical Fire, and I have to be willing to let myself get tricked on the Ferrothorn, unfortunately. On the Corviknight, sorry. As I value spikes a lot in the end game to chip away things like Slowbro. They go for Mystical Fire again, which lets me roost here. I can pretty much play this infinitely uh, with the roosts on Mystical Fire. as I will pressure stall them up before they do too much to me. They presumably teleport back into Ndidi here. As they go in Jirachi. Interesting. So I value spikes here so much. Even if they trip me, I still value spikes so much here. And I can take out Guard uh, Ferrothorn too. 
power whip in the late game, as they do not seem to have a defogger or spinner. So that's a great play for me here. Unfortunately, Magic Art and Alakazam will make it immune. As I take out Slowbro, possibly wanting to try Scald Burn me. Which is exactly what they want to go for. And they get it off. But I can take out Zone here. On the Teleport. This puts pressure on Jirachi, Gardevoir, and Indeedee. I have to trace my Sturdy. So I think Ferrothorn is mostly useless in the endgame here. Caesar, I think, lives a Focus Blast at this percentage, and I can U-turn off on what might be Indeedee coming out, as it is Slowbro coming out. That's okay, because I get tons of damage and can now Vault Switch off with my Magnezone. So with Slowbro gone, Excursor becomes a much bigger threat to my enemy. But I will go Caesar here. Kind of saying, hey, you need to take up Indeedee and take some jet damage with Spikes. And I always go Corviknight here. Uh, allowing me to roost up some more. So they keep getting chip damage between the Gardevoir and the Jirachi and Ndidi every time they swap. Alakazam can still be an issue for me, but Excadrill is very good in the late game for him. I'm not sure what Gardevoir can do here, so I will roost just to scout. As they go for Focus Blast, which is no damage. Allowing me to get a Brave Bird off here. I could and maybe should have stalled out the Focus Blast, so that could have been a bad play on my part. But here I will just roost all this HP back. So their best play there was to probably pressure me out with Corviknight, Corv Corv my bad, and have me come in later on a Mystical Fire to KO. But in this position, between Caesar and Excadrill, I do win the game, so GG. So that's going to be Steel. I hope you enjoyed today's showcase. Um, definitely some good games there. I actually really like Steel. I think it's always just a great monotype in pretty much any generation that's in. Steel is just a good type to specialize in. And it has some pretty powerful offensive threats this generation. So as always, team is down below in the description. So feel free to check that out. And um, the Discord is also linked down below. If you want to get to know the community or chat to myself, just generally talk about Pokemon and monotypes in general, feel free to come by. Um, we'd love to have you there. Other than that, I hope you all have a fantastic day and look forward to making the next video. Take care.